Ohio and learned how the family that lived there is still making an impact today. Tucked away right here in Northeast Ohio is a presidential piece of American history. We want people here locally in Northeast Ohio to have a lot of pride in the fact that this site is here, that, that you know, James Garfield was a Northeast Ohioan. The James A. Garfield National Historic Site in Menor, part of the National Park Service, was once home to President Garfield and his family. The Garfields bought the then 160-acre property in 1876, expanding the original nine-room farmhouse. Just four years later, he became the 20th president of the United States. Once they left here in late February 1881 for him to go be inaugurated as president on March 4th, 1881, uh, he unfortunately never saw this property again uh, because he was assassinated a few months later. Despite the short time spent in this home, these walls are teeming with historical significance. Its impact on American politics felt before even walking in the front door. This is the spot where James Garfield ran the first ever front porch presidential campaign. He would come out of the front doors there, he would come out onto the porch, and then he would talk to people gathered out here. Site manager Todd Arrington says historians believe Garfield was the first president to campaign in another language, speaking with German immigrants from this very porch. He was a Renaissance man for, for his age, for sure. Oh, definitely. Inside the house and up the stairs, another first in American history. After her husband's death, Lucretia Rudolph Garfield set out to preserve his work, adding on a memorial library on the second floor. Mrs. Lucretia Garfield called this the memory room. So she built this as part of the memorial library. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was in here that she actually stored all of her husband's uh, letters, diaries, papers, really anything that had to do with his public career. Creating an archive, even saving a wreath from her husband's funeral sent by Queen Victoria. This room paving the way for presidential libraries to come. It's really a unique uh, and, and, and wonderful thing to have a national park in your backyard. While this house tells a story, Arrington also wants to emphasize the story of Garfield himself. Garfield served in Congress for 17 years. He fought for the Union in the Civil War. He was a husband and father. And Arrington says the things they talk about with the staff and public at this site tie into some current national conversations. We talk a lot about, for example, Garfield as an abolitionist, somebody who was vocally opposed to slavery. Uh, we talk about him as a, a congressman who was deeply concerned about the future of formerly enslaved people in the South and the fact that he did support uh, some pretty progressive ideas about uh, equality. Principles from the past that could inform the present. By talking about some of these things that, that, that are still going on in this country and conversations that we're still having as a country, that helps bring Garfield around and make him relevant to people even in, in 2022. Well, you don't need a reservation to tour the home unless you're in a larger group. And they also host other events on the grounds as well. They even had a Shakespeare production last night. They're hosting another July 30th. They actually just had a naturalization ceremony on Friday for new citizens, which I thought was so appropriate to welcome in a new crop of citizens at a presidential home. <laughs> so, I mean, and I'm sure it's always beautifully taken care of. The yes. landscape is probably ideal. So anyone who just wants to go kind of sightsee, it's yeah. uh, something else that you probably haven't even hopped on over to right here in Northeast Ohio. And that's what he was saying as well. The the gentleman who very kindly guided us and gave us a really yeah. extensive tour there, Todd Arrington, but he said that they get people who come because they know it's there and they're mm -hmm. so excited. And then they have people who drive by it every single day. I have no idea. No idea it's there. And when they finally pop their head in, they say, wow, what an amazing piece of American history right here in Menor. It's one of those things where you're like, that was in my own backyard right. for how long? And right. I didn't know we had it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure a lot of folks probably watching this right now saying, wow, I might have to actually stop on in. Yeah, very interesting tour. I would definitely recommend it. Mm -hmm.